Hi everyone and welcome to our video on some exam questions related to atomic structure and the periodic table. Our first exam question states, the electronic structure of the atoms of five elements are shown in the figure below. The letters are not the symbols of the elements. Choose the elements to answer the question. Each element can be used once, more than once or not at all. Use the periodic table to help you. So with this question, your periodic table can assist you massively. So the first question says, which element is hydrogen? A, B, C, D or E. Now, if we look, hydrogen has one electron in its outer shell. It has one electron in total. So which one has one electron in total? It's element B. So which element is hydrogen? It's going to be element B. And that would get you one mark. Now, the next question says, which element is a halogen? Now, a halogen is part of group seven. And because it's part of group seven, that means it has seven electrons in its outer shell. So in its final shell, it has seven electrons. So which one of these images has seven electrons in its outer shell? As you can see, it's element D. Element D has seven electrons in its outer shell. So over here, we would just take element D. That would get you one mark. The next question says, which element is a metal in the same group of the periodic table as element A? So if we look over here, element A, because it has one electron in its outer shell, that's going to tell us that it is in group one. So which other element has an electron in its outer shell, has one electron in its outer shell? And remember, it's saying that it's a metal. That's the key word over there. It's saying which element is a metal. Now, we know that element B is hydrogen. Hydrogen is not a metal, so we can rule out element B. Which other element is a metal and has one electron in its outer shell, it's element E. As you can see over here, it has one electron in its outer shell. So the answer to this one is element E for one mark. Now, the next question says, which element exists as single atoms, A, B, C, or D? So if we go back up, Elements which exist as single atoms are very unreactive and have a full outer shell. Which of these have a full outer shell? It's element C. Element C has a full outer shell. And that's why it's going to be very unreactive. So it's part of the noble gases. So the final one would be element C. For one mark. Okay. Now, the next question says, there are two isotopes of element A. Information about the two isotopes is shown in the table below. We've given the mass number of isotope 6, 7 and the percentage abundance 92.5 and 7.5. Use the information in the table above to calculate the relative atomic mass of element A. And you need to give your answer to two decimal places so again the formula you would do the mass number multiplied by the percentage abundance added to the second mass number multiplied by the percentage abundance and then divided by the total percentage abundance so you would do 6 multiplied by 92.5 close bracket add that to 7 multiplied by 7.5 and then you would divide it by 92.5 add 7.5. And this you can just type into the calculator. And you would get an answer of 6.075. Now it does say to two decimal places. So you would round 5 up and you would get 6.08. Okay, and that would be worth four marks.
Okay, next question. An atom of aluminium has the symbol Al. 27 is the mass number and 13 is the atomic number. Give the number of protons, neutrons and electrons in this atom of aluminium. So remember, the bottom number tells us the protons and the top number tells us the protons and the neutrons. Okay, so the number of protons is just going to be 13. And remember, the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons. So that's also going to be 13. And the number of neutrons is going to be the mass number, subtract the atomic number. So it's going to be the top number, subtract the bottom number, 27, subtract 13, giving us an answer of 14. So the number of neutrons is 14. That would get you three marks. Now, it says, why is aluminium positioned in group three of the periodic table? Well, it's placed in group three because it has three electrons in its outer shell. Okay, so because aluminium has three electrons in its outer shell okay and that would get you one mark okay now the next question says in the periodic table the transition elements and group one elements are metals some of the properties of two transition elements and two group one elements are shown in the table below use your knowledge and the data in the table above to compare the chemical and physical properties of transition elements and group one elements so let's just draw out a table so it's a six marker let's draw out a table so we have the transition elements and we also have the group one elements okay so transition elements what do we know about the physical properties of transition elements? Well, we know that transition elements are metals. So that means that they're very hard. Okay, so they're very hard. And they're going to have a high density. They're going to have a high density. And because they're very hard, they're going to have high melting points and that's shown in the table above as well on the other hand group one elements are soft have low densities and have low melting points okay so we've compared that that would be approximately two three marks at the moment Okay, because you've compared three things. Now let's compare the chemical properties. So we know that transition elements are unreactive. They are, they are not very reactive. The group one elements, however, they're very reactive. Now transition elements, they can form different charged ions can form different charged ions and the group one elements they can only form one plus ions okay so that's the only ions that they can form and you can add another thing about transition elements that they are colorful compounds. So colorful compounds is what they form. Okay, and those points there are enough to get you the six marks for this question. You have compared both the physical properties and the chemical properties. Okay, that's the key thing over here. 
we've compared both the physical properties and the chemical properties. You would get three marks for comparing chemical and three marks for comparing physical. Okay, next question. Rock salt is a mixture of sand and salt. Salt dissolves in water, sand doesn't dissolve in water. Now some students separated rock salt. This is the method they used. Place the rock salt in a beaker, add 100 centimeters cubed of cold water and allow the sand to settle to the bottom of the beaker. Carefully pour the salty water into an evaporating dish. Heat the contents of the evaporating dish with a Bunsen burner until salt crystals start to form. So just one improvement to step two to make sure all the salt is dissolved in the water. So to make sure all of the salt has dissolved in the water, we're adding cold water. Now, cold water doesn't have enough energy within it. If you heat it, then the, it would easily dissolve because the water has more energy. So one improvement is that you can heat it. You can heat the water. Or what else you could have said is that you could stir the mixture. So stir the mixture. And any of them would get one mark. Now, the salty water in step four contained very small grains of sand. Suggest so one improvement to step four to remove all the sand. So, as you can see, we've poured the salty water into the evaporating dish with the sand settled at the bottom, but some of the sand has still come into the evaporating dish. So there's a scientific method which you can use, and that is the filter method. You can filter the sand out to make sure that there's no sand left in the solution. Okay, so filter is your keyword for one mark. And it says, suggest one safety precaution the student should take in step five. So in step five, he's heating using a Bunsen burner. So you could have said, wear safety goggles. So wear safety goggles and that would get you another mark okay another student remove water from salty water using the apparatus in the figure below describe how this technique works by referring to the processes at a and b so what's happening at a so we're heating the salty water and we're removing the water so it's separated from the salt so what's actually happening? We're heating it. So at A, we're evaporating the water. So we're evaporating the water. And because we've evaporated it, it's now a gas. We need to condense that gas so it turns back into its liquid form. And that's the purpose of the condenser in this situation here. So what is process B? Process B is condensing so process a was evaporating process b is condensing that would get you two marks final question what is the reading on the thermometer during this process so we're heating the water the water is going to evaporate and condense so this question is actually testing your knowledge on the boiling point of water. We're boiling the water so it evaporates. So what's the temperature on the thermometer going to be? It's basically asking you what is the boiling point of water. And for that question, it is 100 degrees. That would get you one mark. And that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. And one last thing, please subscribe, hit the like button and the notification bell.